Okay, man, are you ready to go? I'm Just ready to go. Now, come on, now, crank this motherfucker up. Gino, that Pinguino Grieco here again with another episode of Deep Listens, and today it is time for us to venture west, go forth and defeat the cows, face the clowns, and conquer the undead. We have played West of Loathing, and we have opinions on it. And I am joined, as always, by the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest, kablutinest partner in the West... Uh, Pete Busby. What's going on, everybody? Pumped to talk about this game. I picked it, so I better be pumped. I've always been a big fan of Westerns. And, you know, John Wayne, despite his, let's say, less savory aspects. Uh, this week, I thought we could use something that, you know, would cheer us up a little bit. Nice, you know, fun, fun fact. They're not always fun. So here's one that's going to start terrible, but I promise you it's going to get a lot better. All right. So in Sweden, trust me, just just hang with okay. me. It'll be fine. So in Sweden, uh, being gay was actually identified as an illness as late as 1979, right? So in order to protest, all the Swedes got together and they called in gay to work. So they all called their <laughs> offices and they're like, can't come in today, guys. Sorry, I'm super gay. <laughs> and, like, it, it worked. They got out of work, and one woman was actually even able to get Social Security by, you know, for being gay. She's like, guys, I'm super ill, super gay. I need Social Security. And she got it. And then finally everybody was like, obviously, this is ridiculous. That's the whole point. And clearly it's no longer considered an illness. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, if you're going to call it an illness, I guess we're going we're gonna to call yeah. out till you say yeah. that I can work again. Yep. All the Swedes called in gay to work, which is the – so it's the title of the this article from Mental Floss by Shaughnessy Farrow, The Time Swedes Called in Gay to Work, which is a perfect headline. That is. That is a perfect headline. And we are also joined, as always, by the roughenest, toughenest, bad guy bustinest podcast co-host, M. Paladino. Howdy, partners. Uh Howdy. Yeah, I I don't have any fun facts. Uh, I've been called in sick because of gay for uh, the past month. So, <laughs> nice. yeah. yep, all uh, of us. You know, we are all calling in sick. Some of us give different reasons. Sometimes <laughs> we can all we can all just say that's the reason. We can make yeah. this protest happen in the U.S. Well, we uh have some stuff to talk about with uh, West of Loathing, but before we get to that, we've got a few things to touch on first. Um, first off, we've got emails. Uh, you can get in touch with the show at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Lipson.com. We've got our comment sections and DeepListensPodcast at gmail.com. And we've got an email, folks. This comes in from Chris Zombie Pie Redacted, and it's an actual email. And he says, Dear Deep Listens compatriots, a lot has happened since I last sent you all an email. But uh, Mm -hmm. four things have remained constant. Death, taxes, Aaron Gordon being robbed during the dunk contest, and the podcast (laughs) making fun of my food preferences. So I saw fit to ask you all a series of food-based questions based on your culinary opinions. Donut, take these questions lightly. (laughs) 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 Oh, Oh, boy. This is very serious. Question one. Uh, what is one dish or food item your opinions or feeling towards have completely changed since you were a kid? For me, I have fallen in love with black coffee and black licorice after despising the two for years. Uh, Pete, what about you? What do you think? Foods that you have 180'd on. I can't think of so many that like I used to, to hate that I like now. I mean, I used to be a very picky eater. And, like, everything's expanded pretty dramatically. But one thing I used to really like that I don't think I could, like, bring myself to, to drink so much anymore, I used to drink strawberry milk with dinner all the time. Gross. So, yeah, so, like, instead of chocolate syrup, it would just be strawberry syrup. I'm not sure if I could do that 
again. I used to go out to restaurants too and order milk all the time. The people look at you weird if you do that as a grown man. Servers weird. don't like it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, we need to report you. The milk is for cooking. <laughs> and what about you? I'm trying to think. Um, I used to drink orange juice for every meal, uh, and now I don't drink it at all unless I see it in there. And I'm like, a cold glass of orange juice would be pretty good right now. Um, it's a good get. Yeah. I also uh, didn't ever like pickles, and now I'm sort of like having them on my hamburgers and stuff. So... Yeah, yeah pickles are great. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't eat like a whole one, but I'll have like, you know, an on something. So for me, uh, the obvious one is all meat. I don't eat any of it <clears throat> anymore. That's a pretty big yeah, one. Yeah. Used to eat a lot of it. Now don't eat any. Uh, but if we're going to talk about like specific foods that used to, uh, you know, seem weird to me, Brussels sprouts. Mm, those uh, still seem tasty. Weird you me. roast them up. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I think the first time I had Brussels sprouts, they were steamed and unseasoned. No, 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 no. And that was the problem. Steamed and unseasoned Brussels sprouts are pretty, like, they're chewy and rubbery they're terrible. And, and terrible. No. They're, they're health food. Um, but if you roast them with just, just like some salt and pepper, uh, they're delicious. So that's one. Mm -hmm. It was just the preparation. But I basically would not touch Brussels sprouts for like 10 years until someone cooked them properly. And I was like, shit, my parents just goofed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> this food is usually good. Um, question two, what is the biggest tourist trap food you recommend people to avoid? That is, what is a food item commonly associated or connected with your area that you think is overpriced or not as good as others may seem? For me, it has to be soup in a bread bowl. For whatever reason, soup in a sourdough loaf is commonly associated with the Bay Area, especially with clam chowder, and I have found it consistently overpriced and not nearly as good as people claim. Do you hate Philly cheesesteaks, Pete? Do you think they're... I mean, I no, I don't eat cheese, so I don't really get them. But, like, cheesesteaks are generally... They're fine. They're not overpriced. Some places are better than others, but you can't really screw it up. Tasty cakes are good, too. I think they're fine. One thing, this is sort of adjacent to his question, but this is how I'm going to answer it. Lots of people think they've eaten soft pretzels because they've been to Annie Ann's. Uh, and, like, Annie Ann's, Annie Ann's is tasty. Like, I like Annie Ann's, but they're not really soft pretzels. So you have to, like, explain to people what real pretzels are and should be. That's the one I notice most. Yeah, agree with that. Addendum to that, the Cinnabon all mm. too much, all together too much. Now, it's not associated with my area, but I like a cinnamon bun. However, the Cinnabon is just, it, it's big, it's sugary. It, they put a very thick, like, coating of sugar on top of it uh, with the frosting. It, there's, it's just too much. The, the proper serving of Cinnabon is maybe like half a cup of Cinnabon, but they give you like, they'll give you a pound of it. If you if you ask for it, it's on the menu. Don't do that. Don't. I haven't had more than two bites of a Cinnabon without feeling sick. <laughs> I, you know, it's only 1,100 calories of Cinnabon. Wait, is that what it says like that's, on their website? That's pretty light. It's like, I think it's 1,000. Yeah. Oh, God. It, Jesus. It's intense. Like, it's up there. Uh, on topic, I would say New York pizza, very good, but don't you don't need to pay a lot for it. Mm -hmm. The price of a New York pizza slice is like a dollar fifty. That's what you should pay. Yeah. Em, do you have any? So this is local, local delicacies that we do not like. Not do not like. Just think that like, oh, this is fine, but you don't need to. You know, you don't need to get it, or you, it's expensive. Get like this instead, like the New York pizza. You can get a New York slice, but if someone's going to charge you five dollars for a slice of pizza, tell them to go fuck oh, yeah. themselves. Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> um, that was the big one. I don't know if we have any other local treats in New York aside from our pizza, which I've been talking about a lot lately. I don't know why it keeps coming up. I think it's ZP's fault. Honestly, I mean, Jewish deli food is a big New York thing because that's true. There's more Jewish people here. 
Yeah, I don't really oh. do like what is it? Uh locks. What? Any of that? No. Nah. So that is one of the foods that I miss the most now that I do not consume of the flesh of animals. Mm. Uh locks and cream cheese were that was my go to breakfast like delicious snack. I'll throw out Yeah, I'll throw out one more. Uh you know, just while we're doing things. This is I mean it's relatively close to me. I will go to my grave fighting against saltwater taffy. It's mm. such like a Jersey thing, and I think saltwater taffy is just terrible. If you want Jersey food, get fudge. If you want candy, yes. saltwater taffy's garbage. I, I would can... kill a man for some fudge right now. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Fudge is the play. Fudge mm. is the play. Fudge is something that now that we are all isolated, it's hard to acquire fudge without using the mail. Can you make fudge? I don't answer that. I know people can make fudge. Question three. Someone yeah, can. Yeah. Can I? I don't no. think so. No. Yeah, people can. People need to uh, stop baking bread at home and instead start making fudge. What is your favorite bad food item? Y'all give me shit for loving Taco Bell, but you all must have some guilty pleasure food. Is there a specific brand of chips that you can down in one sitting or maybe a pizza or burger place you'll splurge on if given the opportunity? P.S. Gino becoming a vegetarian was a huge mistake on your part. <laughs> <laughs> Did he spell it like steak? Yep, missed steak. Ah, uh, he's funny. He's a funny guy. So I'll I'll start just because like I'm generally a connoisseur of shitty food. Like I I plan my whole week around my shitty meal on Saturday, and one of my biggest plays is like very cheap Asian buffets. Oh, so like China eleven buffet. thirteen dollar buffets. Exactly. I've gotten food poisoning. Maybe three times, Jesus. I think. <laughs> Chief so Asian buffets. I know, not the same one. They were different. They were different ones, but like I still keep going back. Like I, I probably have some sort of sickness, but that, that, that's mine. Are you allergic to something? Like I don't know, man. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I've, I get like a weird amount of food poisoning. Honestly, yes. you know what? I can actually resonate with that because at. So when I used to play baseball in high school, we would have spring training down in Florida for like a, a week away, basically. Um, and so we would go down and almost all of the food would be some sort of like spread of chicken fingers and fries and bad burgers. Just whatever place we went to. It was like, it's a sports bar, but we're just going to serve you chicken wings. Um, and the one gleaming hope, the gleaming difference was when we went to China Buffet. And China Buffet, it was, you know, you could eat whatever you want. And we gave someone food poisoning there. We had a, a teammate who said that he could eat anything. Which is stupid. You shouldn't say that. If you're, like, taking bets from people and you're surrounded by teens full of malice, you don't say you can eat anything. So people just kept giving him more and more ridiculous combinations of food. Uh, but the thing that did it was um, ice cream with a ball of wasabi concealed within it. Oh. So he, he, you know, scooped up the ice cream. Like, there was salt in the ice cream. He was like, ah, oh, it's salty. Ha, ha, ha. And then he got to the wasabi. He took a bite down into it. He looked up at us and said, uh, did, you guys, did you guys put wasabi in this? And then people were like, yep. He's like, you guys are assholes. And then he got up and ran to the uh, to the bathroom and threw up. Yeah, that all checks out. Sure. Mm -hmm. China Buffet. Always a great experience. This and... just reminds me of um, Butterfly Soup. Yes. Where they drink the sauce. Yes. I don't know. Like, I like a good Taco Bell every once in a while. I'm not, like, going out of my way for it. I still eat McDonald's. Like, I don't do it regularly, but I don't know. I have my fair share of shitty foods that I eat. I generally don't eat shitty foods for the most part, uh, but I will say I, I'll go through a bag of tortilla chips in a single sitting. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know what I think, too? I don't think it's a shitty food, but I think one of nature's perfect foods and one of the most simple is cinnamon toast. Mm. like just toast with butter and cinnamon sugar like that's that's a quality move and it's so simple what 
just a question. Would you consider most breakfast cereals uh, bad food that you shouldn't eat? I mean, they're not good for you unless it's like flax or some shit like Frosted Mini Wheats, Captain Crunch. It's all just sugar. I like okay. Frosted Mini Wheats. Uh, I was recently at a, at a pharmacy and went to their food section. So, you know, it was good. Um, and I saw their cereal zone and there was a Hershey's Kisses cereal. Family size. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Hershey's Kisses cereal. And I was like, I hate myself just enough to eat this. Um, so I've been slowly whittling that down for a balanced breakfast in the mornings. So nice. I could, you know. So bonus, bonus fun facts. Do you guys know anything about John Kellogg, like the founder of Kellogg cereal? <laughs> what a fucking transition. You <laughs> save that transition. You put yeah. it in a, a lockbox. We will talk about John Kellogg. You say that <laughs> sentence again in like five minutes. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll save it. Okay. Um, M with Discord report. Discord report. This week on the Discord report, uh, on Friday, we actually played our first game of Dungeon Worlds. Uh, it was... Four of us playing, and then uh, our very own Jeff Rude was uh, was running the game. Uh, we recorded it. It is two and a half hours. Uh, I'm going to maybe be splicing that up into several smaller episodes, and then we'll see if there's anything there for your listening pleasure. Pretty simple game so far. Jeff is kicking himself about what he could have done better, and... We're all saying we had a great time, so, you know. That's a good place to be in for an yeah. RPG campaign. It was fun, though. Uh, we had a good time. If you guys want to get in on it, I'm sure uh, we could fit you in. Some adventurers can ride up. Yeah. I will consider it. Uh, I'm on lockdown, so I will eventually run out of things to do, and then role-playing will come up. Maybe once the Community Endurance run is over. Because I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy X to try and get a speed run together in like the last three weeks. Gotcha. Um, which, I guess, uh, two things. First off, if you want to get on the Discord report and get in the Discord, you can do so by supporting the show on patreon.com slash deeplistens. Um, that is a way that we would keep the show going. And it gains you access to our Discord where you can talk to the host of the show. And you can also get in on some of our other events. Uh, we finally had our uh, game night for... Splatoon 2. We did some salmon runs, so that was fun. Um, so you can get in on things like that, like game night. Um, and secondly, the community endurance run is rapidly approaching in two weeks, and I have an update. So for people who have not been uh, on GiantBomb.com's forums or, or seeing anything about the community endurance run, um, unfortunately, Pencils of Promise has sent out an email to all people who have donated to them before saying that they are suspending their uh, construction and schooling projects for the next, for, you know, for the foreseeable future because the schools in the countries they operate in are all closed and asking people to construct buildings in the current coronavirus environment um, is negligent. So they are still fundraising, but none of their programs are going to be working for the next uh, at least few months at, at the very least. So we are looking to transition to another charity. Um, we're going to hopefully narrow in on one soon, and we'll have the donation links and everything like that ready to go. But the community, nothing stops the community endurance run, and so that will still be happening on April the 14th through the 19th. Uh, look forward to that, but the donation link will be slightly different than it has been in years past. Uh, so we will probably – we will 100 percent be doing a COVID-19 uh, a charity surrounding that, um, either supporting doctors or supporting people affected. Um, but we're still narrowing in on which one would do the most good. So, with that out of the way, it's time for my obsession of the week, and I've got two here. Um, one, uh, kind of speaking of, of COVID-19, uh, one of the composers of all of the songs for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, co-writers and, and musical directors for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, passed away, unfortunately, a few days ago of uh, complications associated with COVID-19. Uh, Adam Schlesinger, 
you might know him as the lead singer of Fountains of Wayne, uh, Stacy's mom fame. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. He also wrote that and performed That Thing You Do from the um, movie, That Thing You oh, Do. Oh, shit. That's a great movie. Yep. He wrote uh, he wrote all the songs for that. So um, a big loss. Uh, he co-wrote almost all the songs of my favorite show. Um, was, I think, actively working on a musical version of The Nanny, which sounds great. Um, and like the old sitcom like the sitcom yeah okay yeah um so that was a big loss so i've been listening to a lot of uh, fountains of wayne and trying to listen to his old disc, uh, discography that i wasn't super familiar with um so that's one thing i've been doing also i've been watching a lot of buffy the vampire slayer nice which, which i don't know if you've either of you have watched that show very much but that show's fucking wild yeah uh i am contractually obligated to watch it um my my girlfriend really likes it. Uh, so, if you want to talk about it. What season are you on? I finished it long ago. Uh, okay. I'm on season two. Angel just got mad. He uh, became a bad mm-hmm. guy. Spike's so good. I hope he never leaves. I know he's going <laughs> to. Where is it at? Like, where where can I'm one watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer? On Hulu? It's available? All Fucking of it? everything's on Hulu. Is it on Hulu? It's like the one I don't have. It's on Hulu. That's where I've been watching it. And I watch it because on my uh, Switch, there's no Netflix app, but there is a Hulu app. And since the Switch is almost always plugged in, we've just been watching Hulu shows. There's a Hulu app on the Switch? I didn't know that. There is. It's the only streaming app that I found, which is a bummer because it should have all of them. Um, But yeah, I would say Buffy the Vampire Slayer, really good show, like... Uh, some of the show does not age well. Uh, there's a mm. character who's a techno pagan, which yeah. is incredible. Uh, what is a techno pagan? She uh, they worship technology. She t- studies the occult on the internet. Uh, is what I can take it. That's what that seems to mean. Okay. She has right. floppy disks with pentagrams on them. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh. But. It's a Monster of the Week show, and many times the monster – like, they just take normal teenage concerns or familial concerns and then uh, wrap them up in something that can be punched to death, generally. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And so that's always fun. Like, oh, man, crap, Buffy's mom's dating some dude who seems abusive. Aw, oh, damn, this domestic abuse thing's getting a little real. And then up. Oh, Turns out the person's a monster, so it's not that bad. We're going to punch it to death. Remember when the principal was a giant uh, praying mantis? That wasn't the principal. That was wasn't um, that was a teacher ah, mm-hmm. who was a praying mantis woman. Uh, yeah, there stuff was, like that. There was a clique of cool kids who were picking on other kids, and then they got possessed by the spirits of a hyena, and then they became yeah. a, a pack of, of literal... Literal wolves. Basically, sure, fine. It's okay. great. Like, there's a lot of great episodes. There's like the monster of the day. There's a fraternity that worships a like serpent god that they sacrifice young women to. Like, it's all great. It's really good. You should watch it, Pete. You would enjoy it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get Hulu. There have been a lot of Hulu shows that people have been talking up lately. Yeah, I open my Hulu and. Uh... Can I give you another recommendation? Um, I don't know Please. if you've watched this. Uh, the Orville. Uh, if oh, you are a fan. A Seth MacFarlane show. Yeah. Uh, if you are a fan of any like sci-fi, um, that's like, I think it came out a few years ago, but it's yeah. pretty good. I really liked it. Uh, don't take the fact that Seth MacFarlane is on it uh, as a, detriment good yeah good good caveat i was gonna ask but thank yeah. you for answering yeah, yeah that is the vanity project that he is allowed to that's what family guy and the family guy expanded universe pays for mm-hmm. so he exactly. is allowed to do that because of the trash shows that he makes that bring in the money yeah it's an homage to all the best of like star trek also battlestar galactica is uh streaming on sci-fi now 
been plowing my way through that. That's a good fucking show. Nice. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of a lot of shows. When you're locked in your home, you play a lot of video games, you watch a lot of shows. Yep. Um, so without further ado, let's discuss West of Loathing. Oh, wait, no. Pete, give me that transition again. Uh, so speaking of cereal, do you guys know anything about John Kellogg and like his whole history? Well, <laughs> funny you should say that, Pete, because that's discussed in West of Loathing, the video game we played. Is it really? There's an entire <laughs> section. Found that. <laughs> Yes. Did you not find that? Oh, it's awesome. No, I I know things about John Kellogg. (laughs) I thought you were mentioning it because you found it in the game. No, I just take every possible opportunity to mention John Kellogg because the man was insane. Yeah, there's an entire location in this game dedicated to John Kellogg and how insane he is. It's awesome. So, West of Loathing, Pete, you picked the game. Please tell me about West of Loathing. I will. So West of Loathing is a, a Western, you know, obviously enough. And it has this very sort of interesting stick figure animation style. But the whole idea is you're a young stick figure. I don't think is the are they ever gendered? You pick at the beginning whether you're going to have uh, hair or not hair. And I think that that's how they gender it pretty much. <laughs> yeah. The secondary sexual characteristics. OK, so you are a young stick person traveling west basically to make your fortune, right? You can decide why you want to go west, but that's basically basically the idea. So you're traveling west to Frisco, and on the way you encounter every sorts of, you know, crazy characters and calamitous adventures, and the whole game is very funny, very zany, as you try to sort of make your way to the western frontier. Is that it? That sounds right. Pretty much. Yeah, it's a bunch of western jokes. It's also a turn-based role-playing game. Think like your yes. early Final Fantasies, like your one, one and two sort of turn based. Um, it's got a class system. What class did y'all pick when you started? I was a snake oiler, which is basically yeah. the gunslinging class. Me too. Me three. We are all snake oh, man. Damn. <laughs> I mean, it was the best class. Though. I was wondering as I was trying to pick, like, should I message you guys so we don't pick all the same class? Well, it's the coolest class. So the yeah, there are three classes: cow puncher, bean magician, and snake oiler. And uh, the cow puncher is your strength class. It's all about punching and muscle. The bean magician is a you, you do magics, and so it's got mis- mysticality. But then the snake oiler is all about gun slinging and moxie. What? How can He's you got not, moxie. Mm-hmm. How could you not go with moxie? It's I, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best class. I did a little bit of cow punching, and I was like, "Yeah, this is kind of boring." And then I switched. Oh, could, did you start again? You started anew, or can you switch classes? No, so you have to start. There's no saving. There's no like mid saving. So like, if you screw up or something, you have to start all over again. So I didn't get that far. So it wasn't that big of a switch, honestly. Okay, yeah, because I found. For the snake oiler, like the sale, sales pitch was, yeah, you get good gun tricks, and then also you get to do poison damage and buffs and debuffs, which just seemed good to me. I don't know, in a game like this. Uh, and so when you set off, like, you start off in your hometown of Boring Springs, and you decide that you want to go west for your fortune. And I found that the game set its tone almost immediately because I went to a bookshelf to investigate and i read a book that taught me stupid walking <laughs> oh, the, the best power in the entire game i, I got stupid walking too it. you didn't, didn't find it? it no you just walked normal the whole game yeah you fool well, how do you walk when you <laughs> stupid walk it's different every it time. rotates oh, you can, like crawl on the ground you can hop on your lantern there's a whole bunch of, and when you get stupid walking and you read the tag, it's as a child you wanted to walk so badly, and now you can. <laughs> yeah, if you, like sometimes you're like moonwalking, sometimes you're you've got the wide leg like you're a cowboy walk, just all all good, handstands, just so many animations that you you just don't get to see if you don't get stupid walking. Uh, but very early on you get like a series of um perks like that like did you get the tough skin perk 
Is that from Running Into Cactuses? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's a good one. Yeah, if you run into cactuses enough, you get plus 5 HP permanently. Um, and so I think this game is really... The narrative thrust is centered around a, a railroad. That's kind of how it gates your progress as well. Like, you get to a town called Dirtwater, which is a great name for a town, uh, that's run down, and they'll send you off on a few different uh, quest lines out of there. But basically, you go to the train station, and the train will kind of gate your progress between these three sections where first you need to clear some mountains so that you can get to the next section, then you need to build a bridge. But otherwise, you're just kind of walking around these areas, uh, running into different locations, and taking on whatever zany quests happen there, and robbing just everyone, just stealing everything. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, so, like, the best the best joke, like, running gag throughout the whole I was going to ask, game. what was your favorite running gag? So, yeah, might as well get to it. My favorite running gag throughout the whole game was searching spittoons. Yeah. <laughs> so at the bottom of every spittoon is buried... Like a horrible, spit-covered, disgusting item of some sort. You can get pants, you can get hats, you can get guns. But each time you dig into a spittoon, the net game, like narrator of the game gets increasingly exasperated. <laughs> so he's like, you get what this is, right? Somebody's been spitting in this <laughs> for years and no one's cleaning it. Like, You're going to dig in it? Like, yep, I'm going to dig in it. It's just an incredibly like funny thing that each time I saw a spittoon, I got more and more excited to dig through it. <laughs> You get uh, a, uh, what is it, one of those powers yes. um, that gives you, like, resistance to everything if you dig through the right spittoon. If you dig through, if you keep digging through spittoons, you eventually get plus 20% resistance to fire, cold, and electricity. Because <laughs> yeah. you've got spittoon skin. <laughs> Your hands have seen some shit. And it, <laughs> I think the, uh... The actual, like, flavor text is like, on the bright side, that hand will never suffer anything worse than that ever again. <laughs> yeah, and I love that the tone, the more spittoons you delve into, at first, like, there's the exasperation, but then some eventually the tone, like, swaps, and the writing becomes, like, the narrator is saying, are you really going to do this? And then the button, what you're picking, is saying what you're doing. So the narrator's like, so what are you going to do? And then you're like, I'm going to dunk my hand in this fucking vile thing. <laughs> really? You want to do that? I'm in it. You're a, fucking, you get... you're a monster. No, my head's in the spittoon now. When you get to the very last one, too, the narrator just gets, like, super pumped. He's like, yes, last one. Let's do it. I never have to do this again. <laughs> Yeah, there's a section where the narrator's complaining about how he's had to think about spittoons for the last week and how, like, the worst way to describe them, and yet you are still moving forward with this, and how you are just completely trampling on his traumas <laughs> by doing this. It was a great gag. That one was good. I just kept waiting for the spittoon to bite me back and then, you know, get some sort of permanent negative debuff or something or one of them to be empty. But every single spittoon had a better item than the last. Yeah, it was worth it every single time. Did you guys find so another one of my favorites was the evil hat? No. What's the evil hat? So you find this hat and it's got teeth on it. Oh, no. <laughs> I think the, the narrator's like, seriously, don't put on this hat. It would be terrible. You can never take it off. This is actually when I switched from Cow Puncher. And oh. when you put it on, it's exactly what he says is going to happen. Combat becomes near impossible when you put on this evil hat. It was a terrible idea. What yeah, does it do to you? It's called the hard hat, and it makes yes, the game hard. Yeah. It's literally hard mode. Oh. Ha 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 ha. So yeah. you just get wrecked by like the first enemy you come across wandering in the wilderness. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I had – I loved that every haystack had a needle in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good too. That was a really good running gag. Um, I liked – what were some of the other – horn swoggling? Like as a mechanic? Uh, you could get horn swoggling to just like trick people into doing shit for you. And if you just kept adding more and more points to horn swoggling – you could just get out of almost every situation. Like, all the random encounters, you could just trick people into giving there you their you items and then walking away. Wait, you could use that in combat? 
not in combat, before combat. I would oh. just not. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the random encounters. Yeah, so a random encounter would show up and it'd be like, okay, talk this guy out of his pants. Sure. Sounds great. <laughs> so I'm going to get all the experience and not have to do combat and I'm going to get the item? Sure. Yeah. If you have a high enough moxie, the first boss that's like a big golem, you don't have to do that fight. You just like, I think you challenge it to a dance off and then it just dies. <laughs> I think so with Moxie. I think you trick it into running away, but I think there are other, like there's a, a check for all of your skills, like one for strength, one for mysticality. But yeah, it's there's a lot of skill checks in this game for skills that you don't even sometimes realize you have, or would yeah. think that they would work. Usually, too, like pretty much every boss battle or like big battle you come to, you have an option to just either blitz through it like all right i'm just gonna go straight combat run you can find an item that'll probably solve things for you or you can get this skill check so besides random encounters you can go most of the game without really fighting anybody yeah and that was actually a funny thing for me because like goblins you would always mm -hmm. run into them and i learned goblin tongue yeah and so i could too. talk to them and i would always talk them out of whatever they were going to do yeah you can also so who'd you guys pick for your partner did you get a partner? Maybe I should ask. Uh, I picked the doctor. Okay. I picked Susie, the woman who hates uh, cows. The woman out for vengeance. Good pick. Yes. So I picked the goblin mm -hmm. living in the bottom of the pub. Or oh, you can. I guess it would be. You can talk, you can talk to that guy? If you yeah, so if, if you learn goblin tongue before that, instead of killing him, you can use him as your partner, and then he can talk to all the goblins for you. Although you have goblin tongues, so you can do it yourself. Oh, that's awesome. Is he any good? Nah, he's kind of shitty in combat. So, like, he can clone himself, but the clone just sort of gets run over right away. But the way you make him stronger is you feed him miracle Grow. <laughs> Where do you get it? Uh, they're just selling it, like, Wandering Susie or, like, in the, the town markets and stuff. You just buy it. Okay, because for the other two characters, they get stronger. At, at least I assume so. With Susie, the way that she gets stronger is she hates cows, so when you kill cows, she gets stronger. Mm -hmm. For the doctor, uh, she's going after a necromancer, yep. and when you kill skeletons, she, she gets stronger. Oh, those yes. are way easier than leveling up the goblin. He's a pain in the ass to level. You do have to kill a lot of skeletons. Well, I assume you have to kill a lot of cows to make okay. uh, Susie stronger. So, right. like, the first few levels with her are pretty easy, but then after that, it can get a little tough. Though the game seems to give you infinitely spawning uh, sets of whatever enemies will level up your companions. Yeah. Like, there was a and, farm where you could fight limitless cows. And combat's never really, like, that much of an issue, honestly. Like, I never felt myself, like needing to grind very much, honestly. No, I died three times in the game, I think. Yeah, it's not a lot of yeah. combat. I died a few times, but that's because I usually, um, like, if you wake up and you go to the mirror in your room, you can, <laughs> like, I guess insult yourself to make your anger go up. Yeah, uh, that's your stats. Yeah, and that boosts your stats, but if you take another one after you boost it up, uh, then you will die. So I usually was like, I think mine was at three most of the time. Oh, then, high risk, high reward there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was just as angry as possible all the time. Mm -hmm. So you were Hulk, Hulk mode? Yep. That's the thing, I'm always angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I found, once I found out that uh, you get angry if you just, like, lose i stopped intentionally giving myself anger mm. yeah no, but did y'all uh use the like potions and food system not really like i, I was collecting basically everything uh and then i just had like a million potions i could make more potions from the snake briefcase Oh, yes, the uh, snake briefcase. Yeah, you just carry around a briefcase of snakes. Your uh, grandma's briefcase of snakes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I didn't really use it, actually. 
uh, because oh, really? my stats were so fucking tanky. Uh, I was basically <laughs> taking no damage uh, unless it was like later on in the game. Um, yeah, and I was doing like, I don't know, 50 damage with each shot. And once you get like triple shot, you just nice. hit it three times and it dies. You just yeah. hammer phantom. I basically treated it like I did anger. So like the beginning of the day, I would just eat as much as I could, and that was just it. I would just bought my stats that way. How how do you advance time? You die. Other than dying? Yeah, I think just it's dying? just dying. Yeah, I didn't find any other way. Because it would have been useful at certain points. Yeah, there were some sections where the game said, hey, by, tomorrow something's going to happen. And I was like, so I have to die to advance time? No, thank you. Uh, I beat the game on my second day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, There's an achievement if you beat it on the first day. Yeah, if you never die, you don't have to to sleep. Yeah, I I didn't sleep, so I I was like, well, crap. Some of these missions don't complete themselves until tomorrow or the day after. But I guess I'm never gonna finish them. Oh well. Uh, so yeah, I I found that I occasionally used the poison just because it was something you could do that didn't take up time, like it didn't end your turn. So I could just stack poison on someone and then pass the turn and then they'd die from poison. Which was pretty nice. Uh, it, let, it let me deal with some enemies that were too tanky for me when I was underleveled. Um, so it, it was cool having that option. And I don't know if you would have a similar option if you were a cow puncher or a bean magician. Cow puncher didn't seem good. I have no idea about bean magician. The other good thing you can do as a snake oiler, is depending on what gun you have, you can deal stench damage. Yeah. Which is a nice way to sort of bypass physical resistance, too. Like, that's a lot of your spittoon guns will deal stench damage. Yep. Spittoon guns, they're the best. And you can also put um, snake skins on your hat. I, I don't know if that's just snake oiler or if it's um, if you just have the skin and knife, but the snake skin hats can give different buffs to your hat. Which yeah. is pretty cool. We might as well mention hats too. Like a big part of this game is really just collecting hats. So the only thing that marks any character is different, or at least the only thing that marks your character is the hat they're wearing. So like you can collect probably dozens of hats throughout the entire game from just various people. At a certain point, you can even wear a spittoon on your head yes. if you are <laughs> diligent in your spittoon searching. Yeah, and I. What hat did y'all end up settling on? Uh, I mostly used the, um, you get like a laurel deal from the, um, oh, actually, I don't know if you guys had access to this. Uh, it was part of the DLC. Oh. Uh, did you guys go to, you didn't download the DLC, right? I did not. I Nor did I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's a, um, uh, DLC to this game, uh, which is called Gun Manor, something at Gun oh, Manor. No. Yeah. Uh, you go to Gun Manor and there's like a hedge maze outside and the manor is haunted by like 13 different ghosts. Oh uh, no. And you meet, um, let's see, Florence the ghost hunter who is like, she's got a science pistol. Um, <laughs> A science pistol. Yeah, it's like a ray gun. Uh, she becomes like a semi partner for that DLC portion. Anyway, uh, while I was doing the like entry portion of that uh, in the hedge maze, I got like a really good hat that was like a laurel wreath. It gives you three health every turn. Uh, it it had a whole bunch of stat boosts, and then I boosted it later with, like, the snake skins, and I think I silvered it. You can right. silver your stuff. Uh, so that one was just, team. like, yeah. I don't know if it's actually good compared to the later things that you can get, but you can I was just... Your skull. Can and you? A, and a turnip, if you oh, want yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I silvered I... my gun. I think I silvered a hat. I think I silvered a hat. I'm not sure. I silvered something. But yeah, there's a, a lot of good jokes like that. I ended up with a Pope hat. That was my 
my go to hat. Oh, that's good. I hat. went with the the sloppy toppy. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't really matter what hat I wanted at a certain point. Like my stats were high enough, so I just picked the sloppy toppy because I like the name. So if you find this guy and you help him find his secret, like it's like a secret sauce, or like a secret sloppy Joe recipe or something. Oh yes, yep. He's like, here, just to thank you, I'll give you my chef's hat, and it's called the Sloppy Toppy. Yep, I remember that hat. Yep, I mm. didn't. I did not wear it because it wasn't a very good hat. But yes, no, it's not. you toss a decent enough snakeskin on it, doesn't really matter. But I just like that it was called the Sloppy Toppy. <laughs> so, speaking of names, what did you name your characters? Mine was Esther Bowie, uh, granddaughter of David Bowie. <laughs> I always go with, whenever I need to name something, I always go with usually characters' names from Ender's Game. Mm -hmm. So I went with Dink Meeker this time around. Uh, uh, my uh, my lady was Shooterella Bulletstein. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, could you enter uh, names in this? Oh, yes. I yeah, was just hitting like random name generation. No. And then it gave me that one. Yeah. You can pick your own, yeah. I was just like, what's this? What's the most ridiculous name my character could be named? This cowpoke. Shooter you got it. Nice. You found it. Did you and get a uh, a middle name? Sneaky. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> um, I got Marshall. Yeah. I had Sneaky, and then when I got Marshall, it changed. Ah, uh, That yeah, was I, funny. I was, a, I was a sneak through the whole game. Hmm. Which another, like, speaking of middle names, another one of the great gags is if you go, you go to this ghost town, and the ghost town is run by an entire, like, ridiculous bureaucracy. Yes. Yeah. So every Fucking time. Place. <laughs> Fuck Ghostwood. Every time you go to Ghostwood, you have to give your first, middle, and last name at any particular store you go to. Later on, you have to fill out all these forms bouncing on between things, and your character just gets increasingly annoyed by it. Like one of the one of the shopkeeps is like, oh, that I can take care of that for you right away. And there's a long pause, and your character goes, "You spoke too soon, didn't you?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm actually going to need all these forms first. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostwood, Ghostwood's annoying as shit, but it's pretty funny at the end. You have to go back and forth between Ghostwood and Bread Breadwood. Bread Town, yeah, it's on Breadwood. Breadwood, yeah. Breadwood. Yeah. You have to go back and forth between these two fucking places because they need things signed, and then ah, uh, you signed it with the wrong pen, so you need to go back. It's so <laughs> the worst. But then you have to lend Breadwood's mayor your pencil, and then when you yep. go back to Ghost Town, like you forgot your pencil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your favorite side quest that you came across? Mm, that's a tough one. There are some really fucked up side quests in this game. Uh, I think you have to go to the abandoned pickle factory. I did not go to the abandoned pickle factory, so I guess you don't. No, no it's, okay. so you have to you have to like solve a certain number of the town's problems. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do pickles. I did go to the abandoned pickle factory. Yeah. Wait, this is not. That's not the the bread like the beer place, right? No, so like That's... you have to solve some of Breadwood's problems, and one of them has to do with the abandoned pickle factory. I thought is it I... Breadwood? I thought it was um, Dirt Water that needed They're... pickle factory. I mean, there's so damn many of these towns. They're all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the map. There's like probably sixty something stops on this. Oh, the game is huge. It's so big, but it's well, separated it quickly. Yeah, yeah it does. It... The, it's, like, the, separated in three zones uh, as you are moving west. There's, like, the mountains and then the chasm, and then I guess you're up against the ocean for the last part. Yep. Yeah. So it sort of partitions you that way. Tell me about the abandoned pickle factory. So you go to the abandoned pickle factory because you are trying to hunt down a group of... Um, I think it's bandits because everything is bandits. It's always bandits. Yeah. Some sort of outlaw. <laughs> uh, and as you touch the door, you like get shocked by something, and you have a vivid, uh, like hallucination of like being forced into labor in the pickle factory, uh, where you're like in basically 
uh, trapped in your own mind. Uh, and the only way to advance the text is like, you go, let me out, let me out. And uh, once you have that hallucination, it tells you what you have to do in the actual pickle factory, uh, which is basically you're balancing three different rooms of machines. Uh, there's like vinegar, salt, and the pickles. And you have to get those to certain levels. And it's the kind of puzzle that I hate to actually do. So I looked it up. <laughs> um, but there are like the bandits and their ghosts. Cause there's a lot of ghosts in this game too. And they're like, they also have been forced into like a hallucination that they're working at the pickle factory. Oh no. Yeah. It's pretty fucked up. Uh, you can either like kill them and get the answer to the thing. If you remember uh, the specific details of your hallucination, you can use that to answer the puzzles. Or their bones have, like, the answers uh, carved into them once they're dead. It's pretty messed up. Uh, Or you solve the puzzles and then the ghosts go away. Um, And then you go back to dirt water and you're like, well, I tracked them down. Uh... That was fucking weird. Here's their bones, <laughs> and then they put the bones in a cell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's another bounty. I stopped. Yeah. I did only a few bounties. Yeah. You don't, them all. you don't get any like real bonus for doing them all, but you can fill up all the jail cells eventually. Yeah, that's how you get the marshal uh, middle name. Okay, I wasn't a. I wasn't a cop. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. My favorite, maybe just for the reward it gets, is there's there's this place where it's a whole building made out of actually, you know what? I'm going to change my answer. So you can find another really messed up one where you go to this abandoned farmhouse and there's this oh, tiny man. doll. Set yeah. Up. That was, that was going to be one <laughs> I was going to pick. So it's set up at this, like it's basically just a little like play set and you go up and you like read this little girl's diary and she's talking about all these tea parties she used to have with this doll. She's like, mom and dad don't want me to have these tea parties anymore. But the doll says I have to. And you have the option of getting a goblet full of blood and giving it to this doll. Well, the doll, you go up to the doll. The the little girl says like, hey, the doll says that we're going to get attacked by cows soon unless I can just keep having tea parties with her. So I, I better keep doing it. I don't want mom and dad to die. Uh, my brother's gone and they won't accept that he's dead. But uh, I'm gonna. She says that if I keep having tea parties, we'll be okay. And then you open up the toy chest, and the doll starts talking to you. It <laughs> says like, "Hey, me and Susie were gonna have a, t- a tea party. If you go down to the uh, the bloody skull in the basement and whisper <laughs> uh, the special password peanut butter, you can go and get our tea set." Pete, what's the tea set? <laughs> the goblet full of blood. Uh, and- What'd you do with it? The game, so the game is very adamant. <laughs> like, do not give this goblet to this satanic doll. So, of course, I gave the goblet to the satanic doll. Yeah, what happens? It, 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 I think it whispers, I'll see you again, and then leaps through a window and sprints into the distance. Yep. <laughs> I never saw that doll again. So what? if I ran, into, I ran into one more mention of it. So there's a man who runs... A trading post for squirrels. Okay, didn't didn't find that one. Oh, so, <laughs> so he runs a trading post for squirrels, and this man's seen some shit. He's very he's very stressed out, and you go there and you ask him what happened, and he's like, "This doll came and just massacred all the squirrels, <laughs> and there's just bloody footprints all over the place." that's the only mention I ever saw of the doll again. I don't know what happens. I don't know how you, like, hunt it down. See? <laughs> it just disappears. I got that quest, and I went down there, and I broke the fucking goblet, and then the doll was like, you'll live to regret this, and then she leaves. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, have, I have not seen uh, a result of that. And I'm afraid of what will happen when I do. Yeah, it's coming eventually. It's going to be somewhere. 
That's awesome. Yeah. That I love that quest. I loved uh I happened upon Kellogg's farm. So uh t- I assume it's a reference <laughs> to uh the Kellogg of Kellogg's fro- of Kellogg Flakes. Yeah, not Frosted Flakes. By no means Frosted Flakes. No. Um and his compound uh has it's like this institution basically with mo- like motivational Kellogg quotes everywhere and like the posters are like your body is terrible yep. uh, do better you this food is functional historically this all checks out so far yeah uh, they have a gymnasium and all of the equipment sucks it doesn't make you any stronger it's just uncomfortable um you can go into his room and his ghost is hovering over like his books and he tells you not to read anything because everything has to be left just the way it is. Um, you find a secret room into his back room, and his back room just like has a – the secret chamber has just like a chair in it. And it's just the most <laughs> boring secret room ever. Um, you can get a lock pit. Like there's a bunch of lockers where the people lived, and if you pick a bunch of the locks, they just have like the secret recipes to, to his flakes. And they're all boring and don't do anything. Um, but you eventually find like some decent items, but it's mostly just shitting on Kellogg as a person. So I, can I expand yes. on Kellogg just yes. some more Kellogg flex? So the reason, one of the reasons he invented cereal and it was supposed to be like a health food was cause he thought like spicy or like sugary or just flavorful foods made people horny. Yeah. And the one thing John Kellogg could not abide was masturbation. Yeah, he hated it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some pretty graphic stuff right here, but everybody just Please do. So one thing John Kellogg would do to, to discourage masturbation is he would wire. I guess they were young men, boys, teens, who knows how old. He would wire their penises to their testicles. What? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so they couldn't get erections. So, or, like, he'd tape it down? Like, he would use wire. I think they were, like, almost, like, pierced together. Ah, what the or, fuck? Or, like, I don't know if you wrap the wire around the outside. Or another thing he would do is he would put carbolic acid on people's genitals. Ah. Yeah, that's, like, a way to discourage masturbation. Kellogg was messed up. And then, like, his brother was like, yo, like, people like your cereal. Like, we should make it tasty. And he was like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> so finally his brother added sugar to it to make like frosted flakes. And like, that was the end of it. They never spoke again. And his brother spun cereal off into the much more lucrative Kellogg's franchise. That's, That's crazy. It's a weird, weird story. It's a weird, weird compound in the game. To, yeah. To that point. Uh, one of the things you can find in there, if you inspect the beds, uh, he's got chastity pants. Yes, yeah. chastity uh, pants. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a diary note um, that mentions the purity of glands. Uh, <laughs> he's all about, like, purity and... Uh, it's real weird. Yeah, the guy was nuts. Yeah, the the chastity pants, the flavor text was something like, these are the only pants designed to keep the contents inside. Gain the purity of clans, effect by equipping chastity pants and sleeping at night. Uh, Gain the purity of guts, effect by making Kellogg grain flakes and eating them. Gain the Kellogg brand purity perk by using the gym equipment in the order listed on the Kellogg Ranch Workout Regimen. So if you want to follow the Kellogg Workout Regimen... I guess that solves a puzzle. I don't know what it gives you. Don't. <laughs> I never... Okay, so I read those formulas oh. and those things, and I just thought they were the ramblings of a madman. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were, Thanks, but dude. they were also other things. The only reason yeah, that, I'm finding this is because I'm on the wiki. That's a uh, lot of this game, is yeah. like happening upon things, thinking they're the ramblings of a madman, and then it turns out they're the solution to a puzzle two hours from now. Yeah. Apparently, uh, did you read any of the like necromantic books? I did not, find? because God, every I time I, it. yeah, every time I was going to read uh, the works of Nexmex, mm-hmm. 
uh, the, the new – it's like the New Frontier Mexican uh, necromancy. Oh, yeah, it's ne- – it's – I, it, it was just next max. It's a it's a good joke. Yeah. Um, every time I was gonna read it, it said, "Yo, this is like dark shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should think about it." Yeah, and so I never got into it. <laughs> and you're like, "Well, I already gave the blood to that doll. Like, how much <laughs> more can I afford?" Apparently, if you read those books, you get a uh, a corruption, like corruption, except cows, because cows are demonic <laughs> yep. in this game. Uh. And then if you do this, like, workout regimen, it clears that. So oh, I guess if you wanted to I'm not be a necromancer anymore. That's wasteful. That's another, that's another good running gag throughout the whole game is people just keep using this phrase, when the cows came home. Yeah. <laughs> but what they really mean is basically when the cows rose from the dead. <laughs> Yeah, they came out of hell. When the zombie cows came back for revenge. But they just keep saying, ah, when the cows come home. Yeah, I like that meat is the currency. And meat, because they can no longer raise cattle, it's it's mined? Yep, from meat veins. Yeah. Yeah, from meat veins. You can get meat, unrefined meat geodes. This game is super funny. Do you guys know anything? Like, I, I didn't research for this game. This is something I've had to do before. But do you know anything about, like, the scientific theory of humor? Like, why we laugh? No. Is it mm-hmm. so we don't cry? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, nobody really knows, like, for sure, obviously. When you make these sort of, like, evolutionary arguments, there's no way to prove anything. But one of the most common ways or, like, reasons for it is it's, like, a corrective mechanism. So, like, we make an assumption, like, oh, I think this is going to turn out this way. And it turns out a much different way. And we like to laugh. It feels good. So laughing is the reward for correcting our predictive mechanisms. So, like, oh, you got this wrong. It could have turned out this way. You laugh. That's your reward. And you now have improved survival chances because your predictive mechanisms have been corrected. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the idea, right? We laugh because when we notice these, like, differences, it ups our survival chances. That's the evolutionary argument for it, at least. Huh. I I have not heard that before, but that makes some sense. And this game has upped my evolutionary chances of survival against uh, Western puns. (laughs) (laughs) I will never be killed by Western fun again. Yeah, never again. So with that, is there anything else we really want to discuss with West of Loathing? I think this game's – it's fun. There's a bunch of great side quests. Um, I would say most of the game is side quests to the point where uh, the main plot line, like I said earlier, like you go west, you go wester, you go westist. There's one mission to kind of uh, complete the game, and if you do that mission, you can see the end credits, but that doesn't actually finish the game. Like you can keep playing. Uh it keeps track of how many side quests you do, but there's not really that much payoff for them. The joy is just going through, reading the jokes, and playing through. Uh, oh, actually, big question. Did y'all play at 100% speed or slower or faster? Uh, I think I played normal. I didn't even know you could change the speed. Yeah, I um, I upped it after I got past the first um, checkpoint, like got into yeah. the second area. Yeah, I played at 300% sp- speed. <laughs> How is that? Uh, it's a blur. It makes <laughs> combat real fast. I just hit fan the hammer, and then the animation just brrr, dead. It cuts out some sound effects, too. Hmm. But yeah, I, I liked seeing my characters basically teleport to their locations, and then just enemies explode, basically, whenever I fan the hammer. And by the end of the game, I had like 10 AP, so I just fanned the hammer on every yeah, every like, enemy. Really? Just touched you, death. Nice. Well, there's the other one where you shoot into the air, like rootin' tootin' shooting or something. Oh, the shoot uh, nanny. Yeah. The shoot nanny, there we yeah. go. Yeah, and then the bullets just fall at random. As they actually do, quick PSA, don't fire your guns in the air. Those bullets land eventually. <laughs> they totally do, and uh, there was a Mythbusters episode on that one. I don't know if you saw that. But they they did a Mythbusters episode on uh, shooting a bullet in the air because they're like, oh, but terminal velocity on a bullet's only so fast. So how how could someone be killed by it? Because the bullets aren't very heavy. They can't get that high speed when they're falling at terminal velocity. 
It turns out if you shoot the bullet at even a slight angle, or if there's wind, uh, the bullet does not just come back down with the force of gravity. It continues on its original fl- flight path and then accelerates downward. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And, oh. Yeah. And that's how it murders people. Yeah. people so you wouldn't directly straight in the air. So you wouldn't hit yourself. You would hit someone else. Oh no! Correct. You're hitting someone far away from you because gotcha. even a slight angle difference, other than straight up in the air, you know, with the force of a bullet, will send it hundreds of feet or miles further than you expect. Damn. Yeah, there are records of them killing people. Like it definitely happens. Yeah. Yeah, it happens when major sports teams win events. Uh... Uh, so any other final thoughts on West of Loathing? No, nah, I mean, like you pretty much said, there are millions of things we could have talked about with this game. This very much was not a spoiler-packed co- podcast, depending on the amount of content in it. So I very much encourage people to check it out for themselves. Very cool game. I'm going to spoil a bunch of stuff. Go. <laughs> Go for it. Throw, uh, in it rapid whatever. fire. Uh, Curse Circus. Um, there's, uh, wait, where is it? I can't find it anymore. How do you get into the big top? Oh, yeah, what okay. happens in the big top? So I think it has something to do with um, you have to go into the sideshow. Were you able to get in there? I got in the sideshow, yeah. and then I talked to all the people in the, in the freak show, and yeah. they all really seemed like they wanted to talk shit about the clowns, but the clowns wouldn't let them. Yeah, yeah. they did not want to be so, there. So did you see the eggs that were in the circus, like yes. in the sideshow? Yeah. If you distract the clown that's next to him, you can take a closer look, and it says something along the lines of, no two clown has the same face paint, because it's, like, disrespectful. And then you go to the clowns that are on the side of, like, the map, uh, and they will say, yeah, they'll be like, oh, I'm not so-and-so, he's just, uh, you know. And then you're like, but wait... I know that clowns don't share their face paint. Uh, and then you end up on a shit list, basically. Um, and then the big muscle clown that's in the way is like, all right, time to come in. And then it's like a knife throwing act, uh, by the, by the head guy in the circus. Uh, and he brings you up as a volunteer. Uh, and because you know too much, he threatens to basically murder you. Um, and then he sends you on, like, a side quest if you do the right thing. It's weird. Apparently, he knows something about the cows. Uh, yeah, because they're the ones holding them back or something. Yeah. Like, that's when I was like, what the fuck is happening in this? Because <laughs> that, that whole scene was, like, a whole ton of plot. I don't know. Like, deal with the circus. Yeah, the circus I mean, is fucking weird. There's a whole, there's a whole alien subplot we didn't even yeah, talk. It's like alien a, tech just buried around. Yep. You get like, you talk to a professor and he's like, "Here's a thing to detect them," and then you find it all around, and yeah, it's everywhere. like you're learning their language. It's crazy. Yep, I yeah. learned their word for weather. And their word for West, a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of words, and didn't I didn't learn enough words? I don't think I learned their word for toilet. That's ah, cool. nice, good get. Yeah. Oh, there's this one's just my favorite uh, subplot because uh, it appealed to me specifically. There's one point where you have to go find a mailman. Uh, yes. Or is it? I don't know. There's a bunch. You got to find a mailman. You got to find a grave digger. Uh, yep. And the grave digger is in like a uh, a fort where they're playing tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever made this game is definitely like a Warhammer player because there were some very specific like terminology used. I was like, oh no, they're calling me out. Yeah. I love when Shooterella, well, Shooterella was like, ah, oh, my brother plays these games. Yeah. Looks like you got a line of sight problem. Mm-hmm. It's like, shit, I don't know if my, my mini can see this opposing unit. Ah, I know. 
you should really use like a, a line of string or something that'll prove it. Oh, that's a really good idea. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're playing fourth edition. Uh, third edition was uh, was better. Yeah, you know how many conversations I had like that. <laughs> I have I've I've had so many conversations, and I haven't associated with Warhammer people in years. Yeah. Uh, yeah that that whole section's pretty good. I liked beating them at all of their mm-hmm. games, and if you go to the credits. Uh, at the end, if you've beaten them at all of the different version, all the different scenarios, um, the credits will tell you that the the mini fig players remember Shooterella to this day. Nice. Remember, remember her? She she whipped our asses. Yeah, she was really good at this game. <laughs> Did y'all play poker? Yeah, poker in quotes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, there's one time where you play poker and you win, you beat. Four aces, all clubs, with five queens, all diamonds, and then you win a suspiciously large deck of cards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. This game's so is... funny. Yeah, it's got it's got a high volume of jokes. I think some of them are very funny. Some of them are just like, eh, that's pretty good. Like, I, did you go to the Big Apple? Yeah, it's just a just big a little pile Big of Apple. Yeah. yeah, it's a big shit on the side of the road, and you can get a bunch of experience by cleaning it up. By just digging it up, yeah. Yeah, you click it fifty times and you get fifty experience. The end. That's it. But yeah, I I think that this game has jokes for everyone. It's not that hard to beat. Like a speed run of this game is probably like ten minutes. Like if you're just gonna stick to the mainline stuff, um, and all the side quests. It feels like Fallout Three, but or like any of the Bethesda Fallout games. Yeah. Good, but they good cut out a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Like, instead of having to travel to and fro all of these places and fighting dozens and dozens of enemies, like, it just gives you all the stuff all at once, whenever you want it. Yeah, and if you if you pick something up, it's generally going to be either something you can directly equip or something that's going to be useful. So you're just better off just taking everything. Yeah, You'll anything that doesn't it. say just sell it, hold on to it. Forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> that goblet of blood that you fed to that doll. <laughs> hold on to it. Or if Eventually you, you... Doll. I'm sure it's a good move. Yeah. Well, no. After you feed it to the doll, you still have it, and you can go to that hole in the ground where you threw all the tests. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Throw the goblet in there. Yeah. I was wondering if I should do that or not, or if I was missing out on something by throwing all my cursed shit into the doll. Well, it just turns your cursed shit into experience. You can also sell your cursed shit. Gotcha. But it doesn't sell for very much. Because it's cursed. <laughs> yeah, because it's vile and cursed. Uh, well, I think that's it for West of Loathing. It's a recommend. recommend. Uh, we, we've we talked about it, but we haven't spoiled very much. There's a lot of great jokes to find, and I think that... It has just enough mechanics that you can appreciate it for that, but you're mostly there for the writing, and the writing's solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Absolutely. also incredibly easy to break the combat. Yeah, you don't have to worry about, like, strategy. Just no, no, plow no. through that. Yeah. Get to the Just fan the hammer. Yep. Uh, so, M, it is now your turn to pick what the next oh, game is. Oh, no. Yeah. Again? Oh, no. Yeah. It just keeps happening. All every right. three, every three times we do this, yep. While well, M's looking, do you think West of Loathing is an East of Eden reference? I didn't really see much about Steinbeck in the game. The um, what this is based off of is an MMO that's called um, Kingdom of Loathing, which is like mm, a, okay, like a fantasy version. Oh, okay. I don't know if it has so, anything to do with anything. So it's basically just like Western of Loathing, but without the urn. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like I said, I, the Steinbeck thing was a stretch, but I figured I'd toss it out there as a former literary student. Yeah, I, I have not read East of Eden, so I'm. It was gone straight over my head. Probably my favorite Steinbeck. All right. So for next time, we are going to play Hollow Knight. Excellent. Okay. I have yeah. that's been on my list. Let me see if it's currently in my backlog. That's it Hollow Knight with a K, right? Yes. Yes. It's a literal knight. Yes. As I thought I remembered. I would say that Hollow Knight is probably the closest to 
Uh, I mean, it's another kind of 2D platformer uh, Metroidvania game. So it's similar yep. to uh, cool. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Or Vault of Story Abyssal City Game of the Year. It's Game of the Year, Vault of Story Abyssal City, any of that. Yep. So check out next time when we play Hollow Knight. Reminder, if you want to get in touch with the show, you can do so at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Libson.com. We've got our comment sections and DeepListens – wait – Deep listens on listen and then uh, deep listen. Mm, dang Just it. use the mail; it'll be easier. The email. <laughs> Send it to the email, the email account that I always say, which is deep listens podcast at gmail dot com. That feels right. I think you got it. I mean, yes. we've only done this once or twice. Yep. Deep listens podcast at gmail dot com. See if if I break up my flow for even a second, all gone. Um, and if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash deep listens. Thank you, Pete. Yep. Always a pleasure when we get to play a game that makes me laugh. Thank you, M. Thank you. Uh, I was not expecting to love this game as much as I do. And thank you to our listeners. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>